amazing. Let me introduce you to an anti-gravity device. Absurd? Well, in part, but not entirely. It's a little thing called a tippy top. And you might have come across one, but if you haven't, you can have a look at mine and make one of your own. Let's first of all see why they're anti-gravity. You notice that, uh, like any top, it's got a lot of weight down there, or like most tops, I should say, a lot of weight down there and a little handle on the top. So if we spin that, you'd expect all the weight to stay at the bottom, like that. But if we spin it fast, have a look and see what happens. I've got several of them here. They're a bit erratic. They canter all over the tabletop, but I think we'll get something out of them. Here we go. Give it a good spin, and it spins properly for a while, then suddenly gets unstable, and boom, like a mushroom, up on its point. Here's another one, the smallest one. Spins, unstable, and up on its point. And a third one. It spins, leaps about, gets unstable, and up it goes on its point. So each of those, apparently in some uh, impossible fashion, is raising that weight up on a point against uh, the force of gravity. Well, it's a complex explanation, but it partly rests on the fact that where you'd expect it to spin, down here, is slightly rough. And there's a drag, a bit of friction, between that and the tabletop. That sets up a new force in the spinning thing, pushes the handle down to one side, and eventually, if it's made properly, leaps it through 180 degrees to stand like a mushroom there. And it gets its energy to do that from the spin that you've given it with your thumb and forefinger. So it's not really anti-gravity at all, but it's a very uh, interesting thing to do. Well, those are quite easy to make. I make them out of little wooden beads, spherical ones, and little is the word, because I've tried the big ones, like this, and although they ought to work in theory, I can't get them to go. They try, but they don't quite make it. And I think it's because they're just too big for me to be able to get enough spin with the thumb and forefinger. So the rule is, get some wooden beads, some round ones, spherical ones, and make them about one centimetre across or less. And that way, I've found that I can get pretty good results. What do you do with them then? Well, before you start, make sure that your bead has got a stick that will jam into the hole. This is a tiny bead, that's really the best of them, I think, and a shazlik stick will fit that beautifully. A little glue will help, but uh, that's a good match. This one, a slightly bigger bead, will take the handle of an old paintbrush, and that's the one I'll use in a tick. And this one takes a knitting needle. Doesn't matter what it is, as long as you can cut it, work it, and it jams pretty solidly. Right, well, let's take the bead and see what you do with them to turn them into a tippy top. Get rid of these things. You'll need something to grind them on. Uh, you can use a file or a bit of sandpaper which is stuck down onto a tabletop, but I stick mine onto a flat board and then it's a big grinding surface that's very useful for lots of things. So you put the bead down on one of those holes and start to work it, to grind that surface flat. Go round and round and figure of eight and all of that and constantly check to make sure that you're keeping the hole in the middle. Because if you get off centre, you get a very peculiar tippy top indeed. And it uh, vanishes under the sofa and chairs and you can't even find it. Well, if you keep checking and grinding carefully, eventually it'll end up like that. The hole's in the middle and what you're left with is really just more than half the sphere. And that's going to be a, a beautiful tippy top when it's finished. Then you get the handle that you've chosen, the one that's going to jam into it, in this case the paintbrush, jam it in, use glue if you have to, until it comes out on the other side. And then you can cut it off either with a saw, if you've got a small one, there, and a handle which is about as long as the top is wide, or if you're very careful, you can put it down here, roll it underneath a, a sharp knife, and cut it off like that, and then like that. Well, if you do that, you get this result. A tippy top with a handle, and that's using a bit of another paintbrush. That's not going to work. You see, it gets unstable, but it never quite turns over. The reason? Well, that handle's a bit long. It just hasn't got the energy to throw itself up there. So in the fine tuning of these, most of them require it, if you put it down here and shorten that handle to the point where really you can only just grab it for spinning, it'll uh, make a bit, much better job of it. And if it's still no good, Grind that off by turning it and filing it there until, in the end, it's going to look not like that one, but like that. Cut short and filed. And if you do that, and you keep tuning them and have a few attempts, you're bound to end up with a tippy top that is this peculiar sort of anti-gravity device.